we're doing. That's the, the, the sanitation uh, outside my home. You know what? If we could get the politicians, take care, the politicians in Washington to work half as hard as those guys, half, maybe a quarter as hard as those guys, they might actually accomplish something, <laughs> okay? Uh, I don't think it would be as worthwhile as what these guys do, but they would accomplish something, okay? Yeah, what a bunch of lazy grifters we have in Washington now. Don't do a thing. Talk. Talk. Oh, they can talk, but that's about it. And, and high among the list, and it's really the point I wanted to get to today, is Mike Pence. Mike Pence. I just wrote a column about, a Clues Views column about Mike Pence. Uh, if you go to constitutionalrightspack.com, constitutionalrightspack.com, you'll see it there. And I, and I think you're going to find it well worth reading. Um, I, to be honest with you, I eviscerate the guy. I, I can't stand the man. I think that if you Google the word hubris, uh, Mike Pence's picture should come up, okay? Unbridled pride, because that's what you got there. We all know that what a lot of people say, you know, he betrayed Donald Trump and the American people on January 6th out of fear, out of fear. Um, he was scared to the, uh, you know, the, to, to buck the, uh, the mainstream media and the uh, Democrat majority, you know, and Joe Biden. Uh, and I think there was a lot of fear there. You know, he's not a particularly brave guy. But I think it was also hubris. I think what you saw with this guy is he looked at it. He's a very calculating politician. He looked at it and said, let's see, if I do what I should do and the Constitution prevails upon me to do, I'm going to throw this election into, into the House, a House vote. But then Trump might come out on top and I might not get to be president. If I betray Trump and the American people in the process, which I don't think particularly bothers Mike Pence, um, then and I can I can run in 2024, and I might be, be able to beat Joe Biden. I think that's exactly what th what went through his mind. Okay, uh, because let me make it clear. But he had every every right. As a matter of fact, he had the responsibility to not certify the six. The, the electors from the six contested states. He simply did. Uh, the 12th Amendment says he did. Section 15 of federal law says he did. And there was precedent. Uh, in 2005, Barbara Boxer objected to, to electors in a presidential election in, in, from 2004 when they, when they had their, their January meeting. And she objected and threw it into a House and Senate vote. Now, Mike Pence knew these things. He's a lot of awful things, but he's not stupid. Um, he knew all this, but he thought to himself, one, he's, he's a little bit of a coward, so he wanted to kowtow to, to those who were being loudest and yelling at him, and two, he's full of pride, and he wanted to be president. Look, read the column, read the column. Now, he tells us that he only follows God's, God's directions. Uh, what's his name? <laughs> It's a ridiculous name of his autobiography. What is it? Uh, uh, Thus saith the Lord, or um, so help me God. So help me God. Everything I do is God directed. Well, I, I think God probably is smart enough to have suggested to Mike, uh, Mike, uh, law is on the side of defending our Constitution. I, God's pretty righteous, and I have a feeling he, if, if, if Mike really does everything by direction of God, I think God probably mentioned that to him. I, as far as him, uh, him being fearful, I think the, the Bible 365 times says fear not, so God spoke to him in that regard. Um, St. Paul wrote about hubris, and so I think God probably spoke to, to my, uh, him about that, to Mike Pence about the, the hubris. And, uh, but unfortunately, as I say in my column, Mike, I'm just giving you my opinion. I think followed 
the direction of, uh, of uh, Satan with Jesus on the mountain when Satan told Jesus, you know, follow me and, and you'll gain the whole world. <laughs> and Mike, a lot weaker than the person he claims to follow with everything, a lot weaker, he decided to sell his own soul and he ain't gaining the whole world. Okay, so that's that's where we are with Mike. I think I think the the uh, situation with Pence reminds me of a story my father used to tell about a my dad was a Methodist minister. He used to tell a story about a, a minister out in uh, Indiana of all places, and the guy really didn't get the proper training and and he was terrible. His sermons were ghastly. Okay, he was just a horrible minister. And one day, one of the other ministers said to him, uh, uh, Seth, where, where do you get the idea that you should become a minister? He said, well, I was out, I was out, uh, out the barn. Uh, he had been a farmer. I was out the barn. I, I looked up in the sky and the clouds had formed the letters GPC. And I knew, I knew God was speaking to me saying, go preach Christ. You know, this guy was like Mike Pence. He thinks God tells him everything to do. Yeah. And the guy said, the cloud said GPC. Yep, go preach Christ. He said, you know, Seth, I hate to say it, but I think what the message God might have been trying to get across to you was go plow corn. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, I think, I think Mike looked up. He's also from Indiana and saw the clouds with the letters GBP. Mike said, well, everything I do, I'm pious, so everything I do is directed by God, and so that means go be president. No, Mike, I think what God was trying to tell you was go buy pasta. I think he was trying to tell you to go down to Vito's uh, down there in Lafayette, Indiana, at the corner of Elm and Six, and get yourself a good spaghetti dinner and leave everybody else alone. <laughs> I'm sorry, folks. <laughs> this guy, this guy is terrible. Okay, he's terrible. Thank God that he's about to re-enter the dustbin of history, which is where he was when Trump pulled him up. Terrible mistake to be VP. And, uh, and all I can say is the sooner the better. Take care.